Why would I say don't buy an inboard outboard boat? I'll tell you why. Inboard outboard boats are on their way out. Nobody else is saying this, but I am. And here's why it's going this way. There were positives to an inboard outboard boat. Historically speaking, they had a very clean look. Not having to look at an engine on the back of a boat, just having seating back there, that is nice. That was always one of their big selling points is a clean look. You're not looking at an engine. You're not looking at something that's dirty or smoky. You're just seeing a boat. They were quiet because the engine was down underneath of the seating area. So it wasn't as loud as a two-stroke outboard. You could have a nice big swim platform on the back. And for many years, an inboard outboard motor was the only way you were gonna get respectable power out of a recreational boat. But there were negatives that came along with all of that. Like for example, the engine location itself. Being located underneath the rear seating area makes it really hard to work on. Just checking the oil is a problem with these kinds of engines because you have to open up several compartments to be able to get access to the dipstick. Any kind of maintenance or whatever is tricky. The outdrive on these is always submerged, which for some people, no big deal. However, if you keep your boat in a marina, that outdrive always being submerged means all of that can be subject to growth of barnacles and other kinds of sea life because of the fact that your outdrive is always underwater. There's no way to tilt it up out of the water. Fire risk. A lot of people don't realize this, but inboard outboard motors on boats are one of the biggest fire risks out there because of the fact that those engine compartments sometimes can get gas fumes in them. And when they get filled with gas fumes, what can happen is it explodes whenever you go to start the engine. Yeah, it can explode. And that's why all inboard outboard boats are equipped with fans. And you have to turn these blower fans on before you start the engine. And you're supposed to have them running whenever you're running at low speeds. I know lots of people will say they never bother, but you should be doing it so that your boat doesn't blow up. And this is especially true if your boat gets older where more things could be leaking or whatever, and more fuel vapors could be getting in there. And then another really huge problem, I think, with an inboard outboard boat is the bellows. The inherent design of an inboard outboard means that you have an engine inside of the boat and an outdrive outside of the boat with a hole in the transom where those two connect. And in that area is the bellows, which is a rubber gasket that connects your outdrive to your engine and some of your other cables and accessories run through these bellows, but they're just a squishy rubber section that connects the inside of the boat to the outside of the boat. And here's the thing, that squishy rubber section is below the water line, meaning it's underwater all the time. However, over time, that rubber can crack and deteriorate or get damaged by something in the water. When water comes in through that area, your boat can sink and it can sink quickly. The bellows is a weak link with an inboard outboard motor. Back in the 1970s, 80s, and even into the 90s, when a lot of people were buying inboard outboard boats, outboard motors were loud. They were smoky because they were two stroke and they weren't very powerful. But all of that has changed in the last 15 years or so. Outboard motors are now very good. They are four stroke, they're efficient, they're fast, they're powerful, and they're very reliable. And you see more and more outboard motors on boats that used to just be inboard outboards. For example, here's Sea Ray. Sea Ray is one of those companies that historically made just inboard outboards or inboard engine boats. In the 1970s, the brochures did not show any outboard options. And now when we look at their website, every one of their models is available either with an inboard outboard or with an outboard motor. And the reason is, is because the outboard motors are now competitive. And it's not just these two series. The Sundancer series, matter of fact, the Sundancer 370 37 foot boat is now only available with outboards. And it's not just Sea Ray, it's other manufacturers too. Here's Four Winds. Most every one of their models is now available with an outboard option. So it's not just something that I'm theorizing. This is the direction things are going. Now here's what's interesting. It has pretty much all of the same positives as the inboard outboard, a clean look. And here's why I say it has a clean look because these engine covers are styled nicely. A lot of them are color matched to the boat. 
So they don't look really bad. They don't look very ugly like some old style engine hanging off the back of a boat. They're quiet. Matter of fact, these new outboard engines are quieter than an inboard outboard engine. Other boats in my marina that have an outboard, their engines are much quieter than my inboard outboard engine, which I think is pretty quiet, but not compared to these newer outboard motors. The swim platform. Yes, they still have a swim platform. Sure, it's not as big as it would be if you had an inboard outboard where it's all the way across, but there is places beside these engines to be able to still get down into the water and sit on a platform. And another important thing is the power. These modern outboard engines accelerate faster than an inboard outboard and have higher top end speed. I've read and watched several videos where they do comparisons of these things and they apparently are faster and more powerful than their inboard outboard counterparts. The outboard engines also don't share any of the negatives from the inboard outboard. The engine location issue from being underneath the seats, that's eliminated. The engine's now hanging off the back of the boat. If you're on your trailer on land, very easy to work on an outboard motor because it's at eye level right there. They're not always submerged like an inboard outboard because an outboard engine can completely tilt up out of the water. So when you're in the marina, you can tilt that engine up and have it out of the water where your prop is not in the water. So you're not getting marine life and growth on there. The fire risk, the fire risk is eliminated as well because the engine is hanging off the back of the boat, self-contained. These are designed for boats and they do not have the blowers and the other things to be able to try to mitigate an explosion like an inboard outboard does. And the bellows, once again, they don't have the weak point of the bellows that an inboard outboard does. So it's not like every two or three years you're having to pull the outdrive to replace the bellows just as routine maintenance like you should do with an inboard outboard. So my thought is if you're buying a new boat especially and you have the option of getting a Sea Ray or a Four Winds or a Cobalt or any of these other brands with either an inboard outboard or an outboard engine, I would go with getting it with the outboard engine because I think that inboard outboards are on their way out. I don't think they're going to be that popular in the future. And I think resale value is going to be greater with the ones with the outboards because people would rather not have to mess with things like a bellows and a gimbal bearing and all those kinds of things with a boat and have those expenses on the horizon. So here's some things to consider if you're buying a new boat and you have the option of going with inboard outboard power or just outboard power. First of all, the negatives. With some of these manufacturers right now, the outboard option seems to cost a bit more up front. It looks like they charge a little bit more to run an outboard on some of these same model boats versus the inboard outboard option. Some people tell me that the outboard engines use a bit more fuel. But if they do use a little bit more fuel, that is something to consider. And frankly, the outboard is visible. It does stick up on the back of the boat. Check out the size of this outboard motor right here. This thing is bigger than me. That's a big outboard engine right there. Doesn't mean you can't ski your tube off the back of the boat. You just have to have different kinds of attachment points up higher, I believe. So that way your, your lines that go back to the water skier or the tube will clear the outboard engine. So it requires a little bit more effort to be able to tube or water ski behind one. And you will see the engine on the back of the boat, but they're not as unattractive as they used to be. On the positive side, the outboard engines are faster and accelerate quicker, which for some people, that's a real advantage. They like that capability to be able to go faster and be able to accelerate faster. The outboards are quieter. That's something I really value on my boat. I don't mind hearing the wind, but I do not like hearing a loud engine all the time whenever I'm cruising at speed. And everybody tells me that outboards are easier to maintain. I know that there's a lot to do to winterize my inboard outboard engine, but an outboard engine does not require any level of effort really to be able to winterize it. So just that maintenance alone is a whole lot easier with an outboard engine. So please let me know what your thoughts are on this subject. Did I hit the nail on the head? Did I help educate you any? Here's another video I think you should check out too. This one's a good one for those of you who are considering buying a new boat.